I'm going to concentrate here in a lot of things that I haven't talked about that are very important. Go a little bit in depth in some windows. So, fellow comrades, welcome back. Talking about provinces, which is very important. Uh, up to this point, uh, we have learned about quarries, coonies, and stuff like that. This thing here in this window, this is the name of the quarry. This is the name of the coonie. And then you uh, have this button here, which is going to allow you to grant this uh, quarry to whatever character you want. Uh, this is good because this allows you to land characters that then are going to be your subjects, but it's going to grant you honor as well. So every time you grant a land title, you can grant the title through this button or through diplomacy, which I'm going to explain a little bit later, and it's going to be very, um, very good for your honor. So as you can see, it's very straightforward. The clan, the clan Mon is here, the banner of the clan, the the clan leader, or the picture of the clan leader. Here we have uh, a little uh, window here, a little area here that is very important. Because here you can see, for example, we right now have a truce with Kyogoku until 1512 and we have a hostage from them. Uh, but why, why this is important uh, strategically is because when you click, for example, in this, in this quarry, uh, we see already here the same, the same information. So now we know that Kikuchi clan is at war with Zujimazu. He has given a hostage to Gamo and the Sushimazu. Now, by just seeing this, we can expect that they declare war and something happened with the hostage situation. This could mean that the hostage that Sushimazu has could be killed. And because they have given a hostage to Gamo, they are not likely to declare war to them. So that's the reason I have said that this is good strategically because you can see what are the possibilities that you have, what are the possibilities that they have in terms of who are they going to declare war, who can they, this and that. So continuing on, so this is very um, straightforward. I have already talked about who of your courtiers are going to be dealing with the actual upgrades of castle, village and and manufactories lots, but I'm going to talk a little bit more about this. Here, for example, the castle. If we hover here, we see that this castle is fourth level two, and we can see the garrison in in this tooltip here that it that it appears when you hover over it, which is very important to it's very useful because here when you do this every every time you do that, in even if if there is a quarry that is uh not of your own, you can do the same thing. So it gives you a lot of interesting oversight over the actual uh, quarry. Here, for example, we have a fort level four. This means that we have uh, we have achieved a fort level increased here, and we have a very powerful fort here. The reason here is because we have a moat. We have up to this point. You can see that these options that we have are the same in every single province. No, it doesn't matter which clan is the owner. That is because we're talking about Japan, so there is no no difference. Wherever you go, you're going to see the same structure. So don't worry about that. Everything is going to be the same because we're talking about feudal Japan. So we have the castle, which is the first one. Then you go up into the earthwork and palisade, so on and so forth. You can see here, grayed out means that you haven't upgraded that. And color, color picture means that you have already um, unlocked that upgrade. But something important to note is that uh, castles, they are useful. To improve the castle, they are going to give you defenses and offensive. And they are going to increase as well the amount of supply. Uh, sometimes supply and as well as the uh, levies that you have on the actual uh, region. It depends on the upgrade. It has a pat pattern in which the first one is going to upgrade the fourth level 
the second one is going to upgrade supply limit and defenses so on and so forth this one is going to increase again the fourth level and this one is going to go on with the supply limit and defenses so it's going to be a one one time defense one time one time fourth level upgrade if that makes sense then we have the village which uh, of course we can see here this is the most developed region that i have so uh, it's easy for me to show you all of these upgrades that you can already see in the hovering over here we see that we have an inn a marketplace the guild hall so on and so forth and which are the upgrades that you're going to getting from each of those uh, this is uh, getting supply limits as well so it's increasing supply limit retinue cap so that is going to be important as well these um, upgrades here not only are going to increase wealth but they are going to increase retinue cap and um, supply limit as well so the further you go of course you're going to have more more uh, more supply limit which I'm going to talk a little bit more in a few seconds just when I get here so then we have the uh, manufacturing slots here that are covered here and every time that you want to uncover them or unlock them you need to send your master of the guard to do the actual expand guides so expand guides, even though they are very expensive, if I click here, you're going to see these. These are specialized buildings. So for example, this is going to make each province very unique because you're going to have specialized buildings here. For example, Spear Maker, Spear Maker um, is going to increase the, the shock of the infantry. And as well, as you can see, is increasing the, the retinue cap. So it doesn't matter what you do, you can combine different um, different buildings and you can improve at the maximum and that is going to make you more powerful eventually. So when I talk about specialized buildings is because you can combine these things because if you want more retinue you can see uh, for example, horse breeder it increases the retinue cap as well for the spear makers, so on and so forth. And um, there are, for example, theaters that are going to decrease the local revolt risk because the peasantry are going to be um, they are going to be entertained by by artisans and um, barracks that are going to increase the local level reinforcement speed or you have for example arquebus production this gun speed and this uh, this uh, links me to the fact uh, about what are these things called gun speed and why can you use this how can you use it if you remember before i talked about um, christianity and the arrival of the europeans if they arrive they are going to bring with them their religion which is Christianity and then I talked about if you haven't seen that video I recommend you to see that video because I explain what is this all about Christianity if you remember they're going to give you national tax modifier and another thing that Christianity is going to bring is going to be Archibusiers these are the actual uh, weapons the gunpowder weapons that they are going to bring with them so they are going to change completely the way of warfare uh, in this time period so when 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 you get the christianity then you also are unlocking the ability to recruit uh, archebusiers or gunpowder um, so with that being said i can continue here and go to uh, revolt risk well revolt risk is this thing that is very usual in in paradox games when it's zero it's okay but sometimes peasantry are going to be a little bit angry when you recently conquer peasants are going to be angry so you need to send as i mentioned before this all of this i mentioned in in the previous video but another thing that is important uh, to take into account is the thing here when you have this max domain size and when you go f above the limit here eventually this is going to make the peasantry a little bit angry most mostly all of the people are going to be angry if you go above this number so this is going to start to increase 
The tax eventually is what do you get from this province which is tied to the village. You can see here if you hover here. All of this tax is coming from the marketplace, the toll booth, down to road network. All these upgrades are giving this. And now this is important supply limit. If you remember, every time that you improve, you are going to get supply limit in some of the options here. Uh, most of them are going to give you supply limit. And um, basically, and this is going to increase over time, or, or actually over as you improve the actual uh, province. And as you can see, it has a base value. And then it says that is multiplied by the amount of provinces that you have. So that is going to be important. The more provinces you're going to have, the more is going to get, the more supplies you're going to get for each province. And why is this important? Because every time that you march armies, the armies are going to take food from those provinces and they are going to eat. So if you have, if you want to move huge armies, you, you need to have a lot of um, supply limit. Then, of course, this is self-explanatory Samurai Levy and Ashgar Levy is the amount of troops that you can take either Samurais or uh, Yari Ashigaru that you can rise uh, from this area. Um, religious buildings here. You can build Shinto Shrine and Buddhist Temple right now because the Christians haven't arrived. And you can, uh, for example, if you conquer, let's say, or if you grant land to someone, let's say I grant land, I grant the island of Iki to Akisada, this guy, and he just build, start building a religious building, but he builds a Buddhist temple. Of course, this is not going to be logical because we are part of the Shintoism uh, faction. So this means that in our clan, in our territories, as you can see here in the, um, Kikuchi uh, great great area they have here uh, orange this means that whoever is here this guy Sagara Nageteru he has built a Buddhist temple so this means that this guy is acting independently from the actual clan leader this area is prone to revolts is prone to get um, revolts or faction revolts which i'm going to show you here because i have seen this before here for example we see that there are shinto zealots here as well you're going to get apart from shinto zealots you're going to get uh here you're going to get a uh, clan iko iki uh, these iko iki warriors they have revolted because this area was uh, controlled by buddhists so this is going to represent the revolt of factions. It could be the Iko Iki warriors, which are some sort of crusaders, like religious monks, that warrior monks that are going to fight um, for their ideals. And you can see the banner here of the rebellion, as well as you can see here the banner for the rebellion in this area that these are um, Shinto East rebels that are taking these. So everything here is going to be uh, influenced by which faction you are in, right? So you can, in some, in some sort of way, if you have a huge territory and you see that there are a lot of Buddhists and Shintoists, you can, for example, leave the actual faction and you could be in a more neutral standing instead of going and starting to piece off the Buddhist by telling openly that you are a Shintoist. So that is one um, strategy or technique that, that you can use if you don't want uh, that, sort of, um, that sort of rebellions. So now let's talk about diplomacy and how you get uh, to that um, to that window. So let's say that I want to talk uh, with Kikuchi Shigetomo, the leader of the Kikuchi clan. I click here, view diplomacy, and we have a bunch of options here. So for example, we see here form clan. This option is grayed out because we cannot form a clan because we already we are already a clan. So this option is going to be available if you are uh, someone that has a leech above you. Join a clan 
is going to be for example that as well you are someone that is below the actual clan leader and you want to join another clan actually if i want to for example this guy aso fuji fujiatsu and i talk with him and i can tell him invite to clan so this means that i'm going to ask this guy to in, to come to my clan so you can do that with any character that you want and you're going to have this window this is going to cost you honor to invite characters to your clan but and as well you have uh, here for example that guy it says that definitely he's not going to accept but uh, let's see this one this takakira invite to clan he as well says that he will not accept because he feels very 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 good and he's in a very good position in his own clan so he's not going to accept so you can do that that is one of the options that you have uh, then of course uh, you have exchange hostages this means that you're going to ask the other character or the other clan leader to give you one of your of her of their children and you're going to give one of your children to them so this is going to make pies in between clans and the prospect of war is going to be reduced by this of course you have the option of declaring war which is going to cost honor this is based on how how much honor does the opponent has uh, in comparison with you so for example this guy has 76 honor and i have 94 honor and if i go and declare war to him this is as well dependent on how well he thinks about me so he kikuchi shigetomo opinion of myself is 42 so the better opinion the opponent has the more um the more honor is going to cost you then you have send gift which is going to uh, take away gold from you but it's going to improve relations so that number here that you see is going to increase um then we have the offer marriage uh, in this um this window you click here and you say uh, i'm going to give you my daughter to to yuki kuchi shigetomo and sometimes you're going to see that they might accept they might accept is a flip uh, you flip a coin and this means that they surely are going to accept but sometimes they are going to say that they they do not accept for example let's try to find it now they are they are fine with this but for example the keda clan here if i go to the leader of the takeda just for the illustration purposes uh, he doesn't have anyone available so offer marriage and i'm going to try to find now he doesn't have so for example there are going to be uh, times in which the characters are definitely not going to accept any 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 offers they might accept in this case so he might accept giving his his daughter to me so continuing with the with the diplomacy and the options that we got here we have then grand landed title this applies for people that are on your realm let's say this so toshikage um, i can go here and grant land the title and here i have the options i can give him oki and execute this is the same as going here going to actual oki and grant here the actual title so that's another way to do that and then we have petition for daimyo title this is if you are below the clan leader so you are going to petition to to the clan leader a title or a kuni then you have demand seppuku this is uh for example let's say your son this is my son uh, I cannot demand Sabuku to him because he has 
as you can see his honor is very high so let's see if we can find someone that has a very low honor honor 32 this one has 27 um honor 30 27 So this is more likely when you when you want to order to commit seppuku to someone that has very low honor, right? So as well, even this guy, I cannot order to demand seppuku because the requirement to demand seppuku to another character is that the character has less than 15 honor. And I assume, as I can as as you can see here. You must, you must have more than three honor to ask for another guy to commit seppuku. The next option we have make chief negotiator. This means that when you have a war in common, you are, for example, the Sui clan, the Takeda clan, and the Kikuchi clan are united with the uh, So clan and they are fighting the Hosokawa clan. So what this means that, for example, the Takeda clan could be the leader of the actual war. But if I go here, I would uh, demand negotiation rights, meaning that I am going to be the one that is going to have the right to negotiate with a common enemy on behalf of all of the combined vassals to make peace, for example. And make chief negotiator as well means that if you are the chief negotiator, you are going to give them the, the give the other clan the, the authority to negotiate peace with a, kind of, with a common enemy. So this is because you have the option here of doing plots to attack other clans and you can uh, do coalitions. So this is going to to be um, this has to do with that uh, fact that you have the option to do coalitions and and be the one that is going to doing the diplomacy so uh, another thing is because right now i'm not at war but if you are at war you have the just let me go to the actual diplomacy screen when you are at war and you want to sue for peace you can do you can either do a white peace which is very common white peace means that everything stays as, is, as it is then you have you can demand the defeat of other of other clan uh, demand defeat means that you are going to uh, demand that they are going to be subjugated by your clan so they are going to be below you or you can concede defeat which um, which means that you're going to give hostages and stuff like that. So you have options such as offer subjugation and offer concede defeat or demand uh, subjugation and demand concede defeat. So these are those are the options that you get when you do um, peace negotiations. And finally, the more children you have, the better is going to do your own clan. So that is going to mean that the more land you have and the less uh, land you grant of course depending on how much you can increase this this is going to have a crucial impact on on your clan survi survivability and uh, the more sons you have and you have no landed characters you're going to be good right right off the bat you're going to go well all the time but problems are going to arise when you start uh getting other uh guys below you you know so a good thing is to have a lot of children so that is finding a good spouse and you can find you can marry up to four spouses in in sengoku so this is quite good not to have children is quite difficult it is more likely that you're going to have a lot of them but there are a lot of a lot of things that are going to be uh, very uh, um, unexpected for example events are going to happen uh, all all the time events are going to appear so i'm going to i'm going to run the game here and you're going to see that uh, events are something that happen uh, you're going to have different situations the world is going to change dynamically so um, 
it's something that is going to to affect you in a good way or in a bad way so each thing that happens uh, could um, could put you in a better position or could destroy everything that you have done uh, in in just a single uh, stroke for example here you see that um, a, an event appears so that is the thing that happens that is the uh, to say something the unexpected um, things that happen in in a in paradox game so you have to take that into account so pretty much your end your end goal is to become shogun and to have control of 50 percent of japan and you're going to have these um visually you're going to see this here so this is mainly the main focus but at the end the thing that you have to do is to have fun and to bring your clan in a good position and survive the more you can so basically this was the this this is the end of the tutorial i i hope uh, it was very useful i hope you can get something good from this uh, in your playthrough go ahead and have fun and if you like this video hit that like button and go and subscribe See you in the next one.